Hey guys, Kiel Mohadeen here, and today I wanted to make our very first project video for the very first project in the AM Tech Kits, which is learning how to light an LED. Now this video is meant to show you guys how the supplemental project videos are going to go, and if you find this helpful, maybe you'll consider pre-ordering. So, all you're going to need for this project is your booklet, your breadboard, your power pack, a blue LED, and then a 220 ohm resistor, which the color code for that is red, red, brown. Now all these components come in your kit. If you don't have your kit, you can go ahead and use your own components, but this is all you're gonna need for this project. All right, so if we open up the booklet to the first project, now this is just a prototype booklet that I'm working off of. The one you guys are gonna get is gonna be slightly different, but the first project, it all looks the same. So. If we go here to the first project, you can get a little description of the project, some setup information, all the components you're going to need, and then we have provided for each of the projects a digital drawing and then electrical schematic. And you can see that the schematic is sort of drawn in a weird way, which is made to mimic the way that it looks on the digital drawing. And this is just one of the things that we've built into this booklet to sort of help you guys form that subconscious understanding, that subconscious connection between the schematic and the breadboard, how do you actually go from reading an electrical schematic to building the circuit, and what does it look like when it's actually built, how are the connections made and everything. Okay, so we provide these side by side and they mimic each other to help you sort of get a grasp on that, especially for the first few projects. Now you can see also, for this first project, I put it as lighting an LED properly in parentheses here. And that's because this is meant to be a real introduction to electronics. There's not gonna be any assumed knowledge here, no software, no Arduino to do the work for you. And the thing is, is that it's really simple, as you can see, and we really break it down for you. So looking at the schematic, okay, the way the circuit is going to work is that our power pack is supplying six volts between the red and black wires here, between our positive power rail and our negative power rail, or between six volts and ground. Okay, so the LED is going to connect to the power pack, the six volts and ground, through our resistor here, okay? So if we're gonna go and build the circuit now, we can go ahead and take a look at our breadboard and hook it up and talk about exactly why it's hooked up that way and why we use those components. All right, so now that we know how our schematic works, we can start to put things together on our breadboard here. And we can start by putting our resistor in, okay? Now our resistor, one leg is gonna connect up to the positive power rail, which is this red line up here. Okay, so we can do that and connect one leg of our resistor in there. And then the other leg, it can go to any hole on our breadboard, okay? And so I'm just gonna connect it up here, which is to the hole A2. Okay, you can see it's connected in there at A2. Okay, then the next step is to take our blue LED and hook that up. Now our blue LED has a positive and negative side, okay? The longer leg is the positive side, and so that's gonna connect up to the same column that we connected our LED up to, and then the other leg can connect up to our negative power rail, which is this blue line up here, okay? So we have our LED connected up to the same column, which is the second column as our resistor, and the other side of that resistor is connected to six volts, and the other side of our LED is connected to this ground or negative power rail. All right, so if we've checked our connections and everything looks good, our last step is gonna to be to connect up our battery pack. So we can go ahead and put that and then the way this battery pack is going to connect up is the red line is going to go to the red line. Makes sense. Okay. And then our black wire is going to connect up to our negative power rail, which is the blue line down here. Okay. All right. So now that we have our battery pack in, we can see that this really does mimic the circuit we had in our schematic. We have a complete circuit here. We have six volts coming in through the red line of our uh, battery pack in through this red positive power rail across into this uh, resistor through this resistor into this column of the breadboard, which our LED is connected to, and then so into, from this column into this right leg of the LED, this anode leg of the LED, through the LED, out through the cathode leg of the LED, into the negative power rail, back to the black wire, back to our battery pack, and so we have a complete circuit there. And if everything is hooked up correctly, when we flip this switch, we should see the LED turn on. So we can go ahead and give that a try. And there you go, our LED turns on. So I hope if you've been following along at home, you're seeing the same result. Otherwise, make sure you're connected to the same column here on your breadboard. Make sure you have the wiring right for your battery pack and from your resistor to your LED, okay? But the real question is, 
how did we know to choose this resistor? And how did we know to hook them up in this specific order? Why is it resistor for first and LED second? And these are great questions that we're gonna get into, okay, right now. So the first question is, why did we choose that resistor? Okay, and we go into this in the booklet, so let's go back to the booklet and check it out. All right, so our question was, how do we know to choose this resistor value? How do we know that this resistor needs to be 220 ohms exactly, or with a color code of red, red, brown? Well, the reason is, is that this resistor, its value is chosen very specifically, okay? And that's because we know from this chart here and just how LEDs work that a blue LED likes a 3.3 volt voltage drop across it and it likes to draw 20 milliamps. That's in its ideal state. That's how this LED wants to be powered, okay? And we know that totally our circuit has six volts across it, okay? So that means that if 3.3 volts of our six volts is getting taken up by the blue LED, that means that we need to dissipate the excess 2.7 volts, six volts minus 3.3 is 2.7, so the excess 2.7 volts needs to be dissipated across our resistor here. And we also know that because the blue LED likes to draw 20 milliamps, these things are connected in series. And so the 20 milliamps, we need this resistor to draw 20 milliamps so that 20 milliamps goes through it and goes through the LED. And the LED is powered properly with 3.3 volts across it and 20 milliamps going through it, okay? Now, how do we figure out the resistor value for those necessary characteristics? Well, we can use the characteristic equation of a resistor, okay, which is Ohm's law, which is to say that the voltage drop across a resistor is equal to the current going through the resistor times the resistance of the resistor itself. Now, we know the voltage drop across the resistor, it's going to be this 2.7 volts that the resistor needs to dissipate. And the current going through it is going to be the 20 milliamps that the blue LED needs to get to it. Okay, so plugging those uh, numbers into our equation, we get that 2.7 volts is equal to 0 0.02 amps times our resistance value. We can solve for R, and we get that R needs to be 135 ohms at the minimum. Now that's because it's a minimum because if we had any less resistance, we'd end up getting more current going through this resistor and then more current going through the LED, and that could be dangerous because that, be, that would be more current than the LED likes. It could end up exploding or something. And so for that reason, we call this resistor a current limiting resistor because it's limiting the amount of current that the LED is going to get and thus the brightness of the LED. If we increase the resistance value of this resistor, there'd be less current going through it. There'd still be 2.7 volts across it, but less current going through it, and then so less current would get to our blue LED and the LED wouldn't light as brightly, okay? So we call this a current limiting resistor, okay? Now the reason we don't actually use a 135 ohm value here is because they don't make 135 ohm resistors. I mean, they're not at least a common value, okay? So we go with the next highest value that we can get from 135 ohms, which is 220 ohms. That's a very common value resistor and one that's included in our kit. And so it's the next highest one from 135. We don't wanna go lower because that could be dangerous. So instead we go higher to the next highest value, which is 220 ohms. So we put in our 220 ohm resistor here, and then we see that the LED lights up just fine. Okay, and that's how we decided to choose this 220 ohm resistor value. Now for our next question. Why don't we do our circuit like this with the LED coming first and then the resistor coming next, right? You might think, well, if we hooked it up this way, it wouldn't work, right? Because if the resistor, its whole job is to limit the amount of current that's coming to the blue LED, well, the resistor has to come first. Otherwise, the current's not gonna be limited by the time it gets to the LED and the LED might explode. And that's honestly a perfectly reasonable idea. And that's exactly why we chose this circuit to be the first circuit in the booklet. And the reason is because that's actually wrong. That's the wrong kind of thinking. And we're gonna show you exactly why. This is a good circuit for building up your beginner intuition because exactly because it's so simple and those kinds of questions are going to give you some huge insight into the way that circuits actually work okay now the reason is because it's six volts okay and our battery pack the circuit isn't going to care what comes first all that matters is that this total six volts gets dissipated in our circuit in a completely okay way in a non-dangerous way okay 
And so still, even though there's, because there's still six volts across here, we're still gonna get 3.3 volts across this blue LED. And so there's still gonna be 2.7 volts across this resistor. And because there's 2.7 volts across this resistor and it's the same resistor value, you're gonna get the same amount of current drawn. So you're gonna get still the correct amount of current going through the LED. Nothing's gonna change at all, okay? And this makes absolute sense because if you're an LED, what are you gonna know about what's coming before you or coming after you? Or you're not gonna know anything about this. All you're gonna know is, hey, I've got 3.3 volts across me and 20 milliamps you know, that I can pull through. I'm happy and I'm gonna light up just fine. And same thing for this resistor, okay? It's all it's gonna see is, oh, hey, there's 2.7 volts across me and I have a resistance of 135 ohms or whatever. I'm gonna draw 20 milliamps. And so 20 milliamps is gonna go through our blue LED. Everything is gonna sum up exactly the same. It doesn't matter whether we do 2.7 volt drop first and then 3.3, or we do the 3.3 volt drop first and then 2.7 volt. All that matters is that together we have these components in series operating this way for this battery pack, for this resistance, for this LED, okay? All right, so there's definitely a lot more that we could talk about this very first project, a lot more nitty gritty that we could get into. For example, you know, what happened if, what would happen if you changed the color of the LED? What if you used a green LED or a red or yellow LED instead? You know, how would your resistor value need to change? What if you change, you know, the voltage of your power pack? Say, you know, you took out one of the batteries or something. How would your resistance value then change for that? And, you know, there's a lot of more things that we could get into, honestly. There's a lot that you could learn from this very simple example of electronics, which is why we started with this circuit, because there, even though it's deceptively simple, there is actually a lot that you can learn by getting into it. Okay, now if this was the first circuit that you've ever built, then congratulations. I hope this was helpful. I hope this made it easy for you to build your very first circuit. I know these things are not easy, especially in the beginning. Um, congratulations if it worked, and I hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you in project two if you did. Um, if you're not new to the world of electronics, I hope you still found the video interesting. And if you are interested in the AM Tech Kit, you can learn more about them on our website or by watching the video uh, here. I'll have it linked up. We are also giving away a special promo code, discount code for 10% off to every single one of our subscribers. So be sure to watch the video if you're interested. And that's just because we could not have gotten this far, could have, couldn't have had this booklet or anything if it hadn't been for you guys. Uh, thank you guys so much for everything, especially with the Kickstarter campaign. It was amazing. If you haven't had a chance to check that out, be sure to check it out on uh, Kickstarter. We'll have links on our website. Uh, you can see updates about it from our Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. So be sure to follow us there on all our social medias to make sure you're getting all the updates, special deals, offers, any updates that are happening with the channel or the kits. Um, but besides that, I think I'll just see you guys in the next one.